the man, he's the myth, he's the legend, he's the scientist with all the answers and all the questions. It's time for another episode of Alex's Science Corner. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, please. No. I really got guess that. on top of the mic doing that. I really got guess that I'm going to cancel headphones in there. <laughs> Alex, what Woo-hoo! is going on in the wide, wide world of science, my friend? All right. So first up is kids who use touchscreen devices sleep less at night. Now, this is something that has been kind of known for okay, adults. Okay, you're saying touchscreen. Is it just touchscreen devices? No, actually any kind of screens. Probably because it's still on when they go to bed. Well. Because <laughs> that's not new news. I no. mean, they... My kids were young for and they adults, were talking. Yeah, adults, they've known this for sure. Now they're getting numbers for kids. And when they're talking about it, they're talking about infants and toddlers. Now that okay, they're doing research Okay, what are infants on. and toddlers doing with, with an iPad or an iPhone? Have you uh, yeah, been out lately? You see yeah, how young a, kids are with, the, with these screens? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, a lot of parents have little their nephew. kids. He's yeah. so sweet. Uh, <laughs> Shut know, up, kid. Here's a screen. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I that's unfortunately him, the case. A do. lot of kids are playing with screens nowadays uh, of all kinds, and most of them are using iPads or various other yeah, some tablets. Yeah, sort of pad, tablet, right. yeah. Uh, so a lot of people are getting tablets for their kids because it's something small, and it's not like it's a TV or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah it's the same you know what's thing. depressing is that mm-hmm. they're the still more thing. tech savvy than I am. <laughs> Brian, anybody is more tech savvy than you are. I walked into that, didn't I? You did. Thank you. You did. All right. So anyway, what they found is, now this particular set of research is for infants and toddlers, but they have found this particular information to apply to almost every age group. Uh, There's some for the very elderly. They don't know if it applies because they haven't tested or did research on the elderly. Yeah, but the elderly, because most of the elderly aren't going to have, you know... Uh, well, a lot of a lot of I them are, well, well. and uh, the challenge, unfortunately, is for elderly. Elderly also have other sleep problems associated with it, so trying to pick out that particular information is a little more challenging. But again, what they found is that for every hour that the kids spend on the tablet during the afternoons or the evenings, it tends to cut about 15 minutes a half hour off of their sleep time overnight. Ooh. Cranky Ooh. kids are yeah. the end result. So so if I go to bed and play a couple of games of, of whatever, is that true for adults then too? That, that you know. Yeah, you're going to be losing sleep. What <sighs> they recommend is about an hour to an hour and a half before you go to bed, you stop using your tablets or phones. And what about if TV? You do, do I, cause, well, TV also because TV... TV is it's, part of that. It's looking it's at a screen. It's all the same technology these days. Well, it's not the technology. It's the white light that you get from the screen. The white light is keeping you up and keeping you up longer because your body's circadian rhythm but is being torn But they used to say, off. go to the light. It's always a good thing to go to the white light. What? <laughs> Never mind. You know the white light. When, <laughs> when you pass over, there's the white light. We're talking about screens, not dying. <laughs> well, he's talking about white light. So isn't it the same white light? No. No. no yes, it's Bobby, not, Bobby. When you die, you're going to go into a TV screen. <laughs> no, there was Poltergeist. That was. <laughs> See? See, now there it is. There was the light. Here. Alex, case closed. <laughs> all right. Gee, now I don't miss uh, Darnell. Darnell at all. <laughs> That's but let I me want go that back. article. I let me go back because this is kind of important yeah, that... for people. Uh, and I do not follow this rule myself either, but. About an hour to an hour and a half before you go to bed, stop looking at screens. Stop looking at TV. Stop looking at uh, tablets. So I should, if, you're going, if I'm going to read a book, I shouldn't be reading it from my my um, Kindle. No, unless you're going. One of the things it's that it's not helps, backlit. It's not backlit. Right, but if you're going to use it as white lettering on a black screen, that is better than using it black lettering on a white screen. I don't because know if I can you're... do that on my. I don't know if I can switch it. You can switch it. You just gotta go through the settings. It's not a kin... It's not one of the high end Kindles. It's one of the low end Kindles. I right, right. The paper whites. Yes. Uh, one. Of the the thing is, it's the brightness and the light. 
that's what's throwing people's circadian rhythms off. Okay. The screens have a lot more bluish light, which informs your body because that you're in the daytime. Okay. And so it throws your circadian rhythm off. So when you're trying to go to bed, your body is still reacting as if it was daytime because of the blue light from the screens. Okay. Then, then that, that raises another question. If I've got one of those fluorescent bulbs in you know the the low wattage bulbs don't those throw off a if lot you're, of blue light they can that's one of one of the challenges is if you're using one of the fluorescent lights that's a blue bluish sort of light that will make it tougher for you to sleep so um, if i'm going to read in bed i should make sure i i should change you the get bulb. one of the you get one of the cream colored lights or one of the non bluish fluorescent lights okay i didn't know and that. if you want to use a screen use it with a bl- black background and white lettering okay don't question alex the science dude okay? well again this is <laughs> is that monica <laughs> no that's someone else i'll let you know when we go off air what's, okay what's the next story what's, yeah i want to hear about the spots and okay. i want that story by the way because i want to Tell my right. nephew about that. Sure. Uh, astronomers have detected a huge cold spot on Jupiter. Now, this is... Uh, it's not something that's directly visible, but they found a part of Jupiter that's about 200 degrees colder than the rest of the Jupiter atmosphere. Now, part of it will say that it's on the poles. And, yeah, you'd expect things to be colder on the poles, But it is 200 degrees colder in the poles than what they expect it to be. And part of that has to do with the magnetic fields and the auroras around Jupiter are creating this cold spot. Because this cold spot, when the auroras disappear, the cold spot kind of disappears. And it's really, really unusual because one of the things that auroras kind of do is they kind of warm up the temperature. So they're expecting it to be warmer than what it should be, but it's actually colder than what it should be. Uh, they're still trying to figure that out. Right now it's just a, oh, we found this cool thing and we're going to spend time figuring out. But it's this cold area that appears in the northern poles of Jupiter when the auroras are happening. Does Jupiter rotate like the Earth does where there's never a spot that's not at some point in time in front of the, the sun? That is, it is rotating. It is uh, spinning in its orbit. It does have a day. One of the challenges is because Jupiter is a gas giant and it's so large, we don't know what the surface of Jupiter or the semi-surface of Jupiter is and what it's really rotating because the cloud layers on top are rotating at different speeds. We've got a guesstimate, but we're not really sure how fast that is. Because Jupiter, when you look at Jupiter, you're going to see these horizontal bands across Jupiter. And that's because different parts of the atmosphere are spinning at different speeds. And all the different speeds, wherever they change speeds, you're going to have a different banding of color. And wherever these bands meet, you're going to have all these turbulent flows. And that's how they're able to tell that that they're moving, how they're moving and when. Right, right. And it, those turbulent flows, that's what makes those really beautiful pictures of Jupiter. So if you see some of the newest pictures of Jupiter from the latest probes, of the Juno probe, beautiful, beautiful pictures of Jupiter, all these turbulent flows, and that's where it's come from. Okay. Thank right. you. <laughs> wow, silence. That's unusual. All right. Well, I, I did it all on the first story. Okay. So, well, I, you know. I, I was I was trying to think of you know uh, age spots you know I was thinking of jokes about the spots on Jupiter you know being okay, aged. Okay, moving right this along. Is where, right, this it, is where the Darnell difference kept... comes in, but because Darnell would have gone back to the traditional Uranus. But oddly, oddly enough, Bobby, my phone is blowing up with stuff jumping on Bobby. So <laughs> what did I do? I we'll just, talk uh, off here. Uh, if you have any questions about these stories uh, or any other science related issues, you can call Alex right now at two zero three. Eight three seven nine nine two four.